Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to today's focus for Saturday, January the 14th, 2023, at 12 12 p.m. Central Time. Today's focus, would it bother you? Today's focus, does it bother you? Would it bother you? Does it bother you? Now, would it, you may not be aware of this situation, so I'm going to ask you, would it bother you if you were to find out this is true? Does it bother you? That's for those who are very aware this is going on, and you're like, yes, it does bother me. So would it bother you if you were to find out? Does it bother you if you currently know it's going on? And you may be asking what I'm talking about. Well, before I can tell you what I'm talking about, I need you to use your imagination. Imagine it was last Sunday and you were at church and you're sitting there in the sanctuary and somewhere during the service, the sanctuary lights are dimmed and on the big screen is a video package previewing and promoting an upcoming sermon series that will begin this Sunday, tomorrow at your church. So last Sunday, you're sitting there, the video package comes on and you're watching it and it's well-produced, dramatic music. You like the visuals. You're like, oh, wow. And and, and maybe whoever you're sitting next to, you're like, oh, we got to come next Sunday. That looks like a great sermon series. I cannot wait. And so it's a video package. It's like a trailer promoting a sermon series. Now let's just stop right there. Does that bother you in any way, shape, or form? Does that, or, or do you just say, oh, that's marketing. It's all good. It's, it's, you don't even really care how much it may have cost for the video package, where they got the video package from. You don't really care. You're like, oh, wow, that's really good. And you're just excited for the sermon series. All right, so, so just stop. let's just stop right there. Does that bother you? Would that bother you? Now, some of you go to churches that do that right? They have a big screen and they have some kind of, they usually play a trailer or a video package promoting the upcoming sermon series. So that may not even bother you, all right? For some of us, that's just a world that is so foreign to us that I don't even know, I don't even know what that would be like because, I mean, I don't know. Now, now also, I do realize sometimes that kind of marketing, promoting an upcoming sermon series, placing it on social media, promoting it, having a good video package. In some cases, I think there there are probably studies that would say it actually increases at least people showing up for the first sermon in that new sermon series. So does that bother you in any way, shape, or form? But, okay, so that was last Sunday, all right? You've been talking all week about the upcoming sermon series. You're excited. You're, you're, You're ready, all right? Now, tomorrow. Now you've got to use your imagination looking. Now you're using that. You used your imagination to look backwards. Now you have to use your imagination to look forward till tomorrow. Let's say tomorrow you walk into church and there's a new video package and it's the introduction to the sermon series. And you're like, oh, 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 I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. And then the pastor begins to preach the sermon. And you're like, wow, this is good. You're writing down the points. You're like, I love this. It was exciting. I love the illustration. I love the outline. I love the points. I love the way he handled the text. And you're like, this is amazing. And you leave church going, wow, I can't wait for the rest of this series. I mean, I love the video package. Got me excited. I love the introduction video. I love the sermon. This is, and you, and immediately you hop on social media. You're telling all of your friends, oh, you've got to come next week for part two. This is the best sermon series. I've ever heard. This is amazing. All right. Sounds good. Now, obviously, I doubt you're going to say, well, I have a problem because I like the sermon. I, I'm, I, I don't think you, anyone's going to have a problem with that. I don't think anybody would. I don't think anyone would, would, would in any way, shape or form would have a problem with that. But wait, 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 wait. Now use your imagination. Let's say now it's Tuesday of this coming week. It's Tuesday. You've already told everyone about the sermon series. You've posted stuff online. And all of a sudden, you found out on Tuesday. Listen carefully. You find out on Tuesday that your pastor went to a website 
and purchased the entire sermon series. All the videos, the promotional video, the introduction video, the entire sermon was sold as a package. Let's pay, let's say he paid $50 or he paid $100 for it. And for the next four or five weeks, he's going to be preaching to you a prepackaged sermon series, and he's basically just reciting it almost word for word. He's basically just a performer reading a script. Would that bother you? Now, remember, you loved the first sermon. You thought it was amazing. You thought it was wonderful. You thought it was great. Would it bother you? Or would you just be like, you know what? I don't care where you got the sermon from. It was great. I, I feel better. I understand the Bible better. It doesn't matter. I mean, we're not here to judge whether it would be theologically sound or not. But the point is, let's just go with the idea that it would be theologically sound. And you thought it was wonderful. You were moved emotionally. You loved it. Would it, would it bother you? Does it bother you that this actually occurs? in churches all across the United States of America on a pretty regular and consistent basis that pastors go to websites and purchase their entire sermon series from the introduction to the conclusion to the promotional material. It's all done for them. Someone else does the work. They just, in a sense, open up the box, Take out the sermon. I'm going to use this in a more physical way because it's all done digitally. But let's just say, here it is. Let's say it's physical. And then he's like, all right, this Sunday we're going to be preaching. And then he preaches the sermon. Would it bother you? Does it bother you? Now, I've been thinking about this all morning. And I'm conflicted. Because I think, and I could be wrong here. But and I and and of course, whatever sample size of people who respond to me is not a scientific, you know, way of determining exactly how people would react to this. But in my mind, I believe if we look at the church in general across the United States of America, I believe that it would not bother the average church member if they found this out. And for many, they know it's happening and it doesn't bother them currently. For those who don't know, if you were to tell them, you're like, hey, hey, look, 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 you see your pastor's sermon? It's right here. It's right. He purchased it. They'd be like, yeah, so? And others, you'd go, hey, look, your pastor purchased his sermons, that entire sermon series. And they'd be like, I know that. It doesn't bother me. So would it or does it? I think for the majority of people, they would shrug their shoulders and be like, whatever. I don't care. As long as I like the sermon, as long as I found it beneficial, as long as I found it helpful, I don't care. So would it bother you? Does it bother you? And here's a, kind of a, a, another question. Is it wrong? The ethical question. Is it wrong? Is it sinful? Is it unbiblical? Or is it just a matter of utilizing the resources that we have currently available to us in 2023, 2022? I mean, this has been going on for a long time. Now, the reason I'm asking this question is because at what time this morning? At 10.18 a.m., at 10.18 a.m., I received an email. Now, before this, I already had like, oh, for today's focus, I think it was Psalm 40 I was going to look at. There, were, there was a couple of things I had for today's focus. But when I looked over at my email and I, I got the notification, again, 10.18 a.m., and here is the, t the subject line for the email. Is your church ready? Now, as soon as I saw, is your church ready? I was like, oh, wait, so are we ready for what? Like, I didn't know what kind of email it was going to get. Sometimes I'll get an email like that. Is your church ready? And it'll be like, basically like 20 pages of, you know, uh, we're being microchipped by the COVID vaccine and, and, you know, the Illuminati has taken over and, and the government is telling you what you can, pre and it's usually some crazed conspiratorial rant uh, and, 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 and asking, is my church really ready? And are we, are we going to take precautions or whatever the case may be? I get lots of crazy emails, all right? You, you would be shocked at the things that get sent to me. All right, but is your church ready? And I'm like, okay, is my church ready for what? So then I read these words, friend. Oh, wow. Isn't that great? I'm their friend. I didn't even know that I'm their friend. I, I, I've got a friend. I didn't even know I had a friend, All right, Friend, 
as the world grows darker, your church needs to learn how to remain faithful in difficult times. Oh, wow. Are we are facing some difficult times. And man, my church does need to learn how to be faithful in difficult times. All right. All right. Yeah. How, how can I make my church be faithful in difficult times? What could I do? Oh, well, let me keep reading. Let me keep reading. So the question is, are they ready? Oh, man. As a pastor, that, that's, a, that's a deep question. Is my church really ready? Have I gotten them ready for the difficult, dark days that we're currently facing? And it can only get worse. Are they ready? What, what should I do? What should I do? I don't know. What should I do? I should keep reading the email. That's why you need to grab this brand new sermon series and equip your church. The sermon series is entitled Live Ready, Remaining Faithful in Difficult Times. And I need to get this sermon series now. It's only a four-week series. So let me click on the, uh, this brand new sermon series. It's a hyperlink and I open it up and it takes me to sermoncentral.com. Sermoncentral.com. Now I can purchase sermon series kits, right? Or I can try pro free, which is a subscription service, right? And this subscription service, then I get access every, you know, four weeks or ever how long to a new sermon series, right? I mean, come on, maybe I need to sign up for this sermon series. So here's like, it looks like a box. It's like, you know, a box live ready. It shows an individual, his hands are in his pocket and he's looking over like a a city and behind him is like rubble and debris. And he's looking at the city and I guess it's supposed to demonstrate. um, It's supposed to demonstrate, whoa, you know, things are getting bad. How do I live ready in the middle of a difficult time? And then it says live ready four week sermon series. Now, if I buy now, it will cost me $50 or it's free with pro premium. I don't know how much pro premium is. Let me click on it. Uh, pro premium. Uh, let's see here. I get all kinds of stuff. I get lots of stuff. Uh, it's $23 a month paid. No, it's paid annually. Um, let's see here. How much do I, how much does this cost? Ooh, $279 if I do it for the year. I don't know. Can I do? I don't, I, I don't think there's a monthly. Is there a monthly plan? Um, I can do a 14 a day trial. Oh, I may do that. All right. So for premium, I have to pay. I guess I have to pay $279. I don't know. But, but put it this way. Yeah, I guess to do the premium, I have to pay them $279 a year and it's billed an- annually. I don't even have the opportunity to do monthly payments. If I want to do a, a Sermon Central pr- a Plus, that's $20 a month. If I want to do Sermon uh, Central Basic, that will cost me $129 a year. So obviously I don't want the basic. I want the premium because like I can't get the premium sermon series live ready unless I do either the pro premium or I pay $50, all right? And, um, well, I just got a notification uh, that someone just purchased the Live Ready Sermon Series. So right now, someone, because it shows you that the current purchase is happening, now it could be all a lie and just be marketing, but it just showed that someone by the name of Spencer just bought this sermon series. Now, in my mind, I'm sorry, I know what that means. (laughs) <laughs> someone is sitting here on a Saturday trying to figure out what they're going to be preaching and just purchased a sermon is what they just did. Okay. But I digress. I digress. Let, let me tell you a little bit more about this. All right, here we go. Taking the next steps. Live Ready is an exciting four week sermon series that will equip you to live out your faith in a way that will have a lasting impact. Through inspiring messages, engaging activities, and powerful media, Live Ready will challenge you to think differently about how you live for God. This sermon series kits includes four customizable sermons, eight sermon videos, motions, and countdowns, five promotional images for social media, promotional video, share it on Facebook, presentation slide deck, and sermon series planning guide. All right, then they show some of the, uh, oh, title one, here's title one, ready your soul, Matthew 24 and John 16, week number two, ready your heart, 
uh, 1 Peter 3, Proverbs 4, Luke 6. Week 3, ready to respond, 1 Corinthians 16. Week 4, ready to respond. And it says, each week focuses on a different aspect of readiness, from getting your soul ready to being ready in your prayers. This series will help you help your people choose to live in a way that honors God. This four-week sermon series includes stunning church media resources to make it easy for your congregation to focus on God's word for them. From preaching slides to social graphics and videos, this is your opportunity to challenge and inspire your church. And here's uh, all the videos that I ha- that they have here. And they've got slides, I guess, here. There's their slides that can be showing up on the big screen leading up to the, ser- the launch of the sermon series. You know, each week people come and they see it, you know, upcoming, this sermon series. And so here we go. It's just, this is so much marketing here. And then they have, uh, let's see here. I don't know if, you, I, I don't know if you can hear this. So there's all these images. Uh, it's well produced. It looks professional with these words showing up. This is like your preview. Like, hey, this is what we're going to be doing so people can be watching it. Then week one is this. I think you're supposed to play this right before the sermon. It's really the same. It's really the same thing. So it's kind of like a hype video. Got to get you hyped. Got to get you. Got to get you ready, right? Before I step in the pulpit, I need my. I need my hype video, right? Okay, yeah. The lights go down. Yeah, everybody's like, yeah. The sermon series is here. I, I. I don't know how much this stuff is actually effective, but this is how church does things in 2023. Uh, it says. Uh, someone just says, I found that so ironic. We have stunning. I, th- I think it says video or images or graphics. Uh, to help them focus on God's word. Sounds like they will be focusing more on the stunning slides and graphics. Exactly. Hey, I'm, they're not going to be focusing on God's word. I've got to put all of this. I've got to come up with every tool to psychologically manipulate them into being excited and to focusing when reality, God's word is just, God's word is secondary to the whole thing. Now they would argue all of this is to get people to God's word I will argue all of this is designed to distract you from God's word because you're getting a performance. You're getting a speech. You're getting a script. You're not getting an actual study of God's word because, I mean, give me a break. The first, you see, the first week is Matthew 24. I'm going to just look at it really quick. Matthew 24, 42 to 44. Matthew 24, 42 through 44. Watch therefore, for you know not know, you know not what hour your Lord doth come. But know this that if the good man of the house had known and what watch the thief would come, he would have watched and would not have suffered his house to be broken up. Therefore be ye also ready, for in such an hour as ye think not, the Son of Man cometh. Now, I got so many questions here what this is re- referencing to. I don't know how you're supposed to even get through that in one week, but okay. And then they have John 16, 33 there as well. Uh, so John 16, 33 is John 16, 33. These things have I spoken unto you that in, that in me you might have peace and the world you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. I mean, like I've got a million questions right there, but they're just going to fly through that. And one week, and then everyone there is just going to be think we studied the word of God. And I don't think they will in any way, shape, or form. They do have a download, a sermon preview. I'm going to hit view. I know we're already at 20 minutes, but that's okay. All right. Uh, Okay, and here's here's how the sermon here's how the sermon view works. Okay, here's the introduction. They literally tell you what you're supposed to say. Let me read it to you. Good morning once again, friends. I'm thankful you decided to join us either in person or online today as we begin a brand new sermon series. Over the next four four weeks, we will be talking about how to live ready, 
As we all know, life can throw some pretty wicked curveballs our way. Not to mention, we live in the midst of constant change. This constant change can cause us to question God, be confused in our faith, or have doubts. All right, so then immediately, and basically that that's literally gives you the exact words you're supposed to say at the very beginning. Like, they don't even say, like, I mean, do you have to give pastors the introduction? I mean, literally, when you write out the introduction for them, that's ridiculous. And guess what will happen? There'll be churches across the United States of America where pastors will be saying the exact same words for the introduction. It's not plagiarism. It's they all bought the sermon. <laughs> They all bought the sermon. And so after that introduction, you're supposed to say, have you ever struggled with doubts about faith? I want to introduce you, I want to introduce to you a guy named John Wesley, who lived in England from 1703 to 1791. Oh, we're going to get some church history. He was the 15th of, the, of 19 kids, and his mom homeschooled them all. His father was a pastor in the Anglican church. Now, they're going to go through the story of John Wesley. Now, you may think, wow, my pastor loves church history. No, your pastor's straight up reading a script. Your pastor's not studied anything about church history. He's just reading a sermon. Now, does that bother you? Would it bother you? Now, you may walk away going, hey, I learned something about John Wesley. Hey, I do have doubts and struggles about my faith. This helped me. Thank you, pastor. I don't care where you got it. I Look, if you need more money to buy more sermons, I'll give you the money. Some would just be like, hey, what do you need? You need $300? I'll send it to you via PayPal so that you can buy more. They may not care. So here's what we're probably going to do. This is my, my plan. Is that what we're going to do is I'm going to create a sermon series. And what we're going to do is we're going to walk through this entire process from the original email, which I've already walked through a little bit with you, to the purchase of the series. Then I'm going to explain exactly what I get once I purchase the series. And then we're just going to walk through it all. If we can get the, if we can get any audio or anything that I think is useful. And those promotional videos, they're not really helpful because it's just music with lots of flashing images with fast edits. Boom, boom, edit, 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 edit. You know, it's got to be quick because people's attention span, you know, can't last more than half a second. So so it's all designed for, you know, for visual, for people sitting in church going, ooh, that looks good. I don't even know how much it actually works. And then to get people to come back. And then you've got to play a, a similar type video before you step into the pulpit. So after everything is ready, then the lights come down, you show the promotional video, then the pastor comes up to the pulpit to then say, (laughs) good morning once again, friends. I'm thankful you decided to join us either in person or online today as we began a brand new sermon series. Over the next four weeks, we'll be talking about how to live ready. As we all know, life can throw some pretty wicked curveballs our way. Not to mention, we live in the midst of constant change. This constant change can cause us to question God, be confused in our faith, or have doubts. Have you ever struggled with doubts about faith? Well, I want to introduce you to a guy named John Wesley. All right, there you go. So like, you know, all you got to do is just read it. The better you are at reading, and if you can read it in a very conversational kind of tone, it doesn't come across like you're reading a script. I mean, you can you can pull that off relatively really really well if you're in so some may actually try to work to memorize it. I don't know what they do, but that's just crazy that I have to pay fifty dollars so that I can even get an introduction of what I'm supposed to say. I mean, I think I can pull that much off, right? Maybe <laughs> I don't know. So uh, yeah, here 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 we go. And then they they have illustrations here. Uh, Yeah. I mean, there's just so much, there's so much here. So that my plan is to do this. (laughs) Oh boy. Even at the end, it says, let us pray together. (laughs) Like you got to tell the pastor, Hey, this is where you say, let us pray. (laughs) They've got the entire script is written out. It's, it's absolutely hilarious to me, right? That, that, okay. All right. I digress. Here we go. So my plan is to do a series where we go step by step through the entire process 
We look at each sermon, right? I literally will try to walk us through each sermon, and then we can you can decide. Now, 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 now you got to. This is what I want you to think about. We could go through this, and you may say, "Well, that sermon is trash. That sermon is garbage." I can understand that, but I want you to think about it, if I do the series and we walk through it. Here's what I want you to: think. What if you thought it was the best? exegetical exposition of scripture you had ever heard. It was theologically sound. It was in depth. It was accurate. It was biblical. It was like you just walked away understanding Matthew 24 better than you've ever understood it in your entire life. But then you found out that he just purchased it. Would that bother you? Or would you just be like, you know, who cares how he got it? What what are, what are the pros and cons? Some some could say the pros is, well, the pastor may get a better sermon than he could actually produce. I mean, these are companies out there. They have teams of writers. Maybe 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 they can write the sermon better than the pastor. So, or does it in your mind? Is it now? What if the pastor tells everyone that he buys his sermons? So therefore, you couldn't accuse him of dishonesty. Would that change it? I want to know. I really want to know people's thoughts today on would it bother you? Does it bother you? Your whole thoughts on the entire industry, the sermon industry out there that sells pastors or sells pastor sermons, right? And that there are pastors out there buying these sermons. Does it bother you that pastors are out there buying sermons? And does it bother you that there's an entire industry? Look, this is just one site. There's countless sites out there where you can subscribe and you can get your sermon sent to you. Now, the, there wouldn't be multiple sites out there doing this unless there's an industry, and there wouldn't be an industry unless there are lots of pastors doing it. And I don't think people care. So, I want to know your thoughts today. Email me, newsif at yahoo.com newsif at yahoo.com, newsif at yahoo.com. And I think we need to keep this in mind because a lot of times the accusations of plagiarism, they're like, well, wait, that pastor took that pastor's sermon. No, they both took their sermon from the service they purchased it from, okay? And some can, or one purchased it and the other one copied the one that was purchased. But the, the bottom line is usually the origin of the sermon is not from any of the pastors involved in the plagiarism scandal. It's from a service that nobody knows about, that someone bought the sermon from. Your thoughts. I, I, I definitely, I'm just curious. I'm curious. I'm curious. Right now, I want to read this entire sermon. I, I, I do want to see what they do here. But it's just... Uh, it's just funny. It's just funny that uh, they literally give you the introduction. I don't know. All right. Newsif at yahoo.com. Newsif at yahoo.com. Today's focus for Saturday, January the 14th, 2023. Would it bother you? Does it bother you? <laughs> 